Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our solar system, has always grabbed space specialists. This small red dwarf, found in 1915 by Robert Ennis, is a key part of the Alpha Centauri system, with Alpha Centauri A and B. Even though it's close, just 4.24 light years away, it's too dim to see without a telescope. But Proxima Centauri is a big deal scientifically, mainly because it hosts Proxima b, a planet in the star's habitable zone. Red dwarfs, like Proxima Centauri and Trappist-1, are smaller, cooler, and last way longer than stars like our sun. They're not as bright, making them hard to spot, but their habitable zones are much closer. For Proxima Centauri, that's about 0.05 astronomical units, much closer than Earth is to the sun. This means Proxima B gets hit with lots of solar flares and radiation, making its climate nothing like Earth's. Finding Proxima B was big for exoplanet research. Using the radial velocity technique, astronomers saw tiny wobbles in Proxima Centauri's position, caused by the gravity of a planet. These wobbles let scientists guess the planet's mass and how long it takes to orbit. In 2016, the European Southern Observatory confirmed Proxima B, a big step in the search for possible living worlds beyond our solar system. Ground-based observations are helpful, but have problems like atmospheric distortion and light mess, which stop telescopes from getting good data about the planet's surface or air. We mostly know about its mass, distance, and orbit from indirect info. To learn more about Proxima b and if it could have life, tools like the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, are key. Proxima Centauri and TRAPPIST-1 are important to understand exoplanetary systems. As the closest star system, it's a chance to study what's needed for life. Proxima b looks promising, a rocky, Earth-sized planet that might have water and maybe life. But its tough atmosphere makes it a hard puzzle for scientists. The James Webb Space Telescope is a game-changer designed to overcome limits. Hubble has given us cool views of the universe, like the age of the cosmos and tons of galaxies, it is limited to visible and ultraviolet light. JWST sees the universe in infrared, so it can see through cosmic dust and find hidden stuff. JWST has a huge primary mirror, 6.5 m across, twice Hubble's size. It grabs way more light, so it can see the faintest, farthest objects. The mirror is coated in gold to reflect infrared light and made of 18 pieces that work together. Another thing JWST has is a sun shield that keeps its instruments at minus 233 degrees Celsius. This cold is needed to spot faint infrared signals without heat. Unlike Hubble, which orbits Earth, JWST hangs out at the second Lagrange point, L2, 1.5 million kilometers away. This spot has less interference from Earth's heat and light, so JWST can watch continuously. JWST can see everything, from the first galaxies to the air of exoplanets like Proxima b. It can spot infrared light, which is cool for studying redshifted objects. JWST can do more than just watch. It's meant to answer big science questions, like where galaxies come from, how stars form, and what makes a planet able to have life. It has tools like the Near-Infrared Camera, NERCOM, the Mid-Infrared Instrument, MIRI, and the Near-Infrared Spectrograph, NIRSPEC. It's like a time machine, a research lab, and a sign of human cleverness. Proxima b has caught the eye of scientists and the public as a possible second Earth. It's in the habitable zone and has the right things for liquid water, which is key for life. It's about 1.17 times the mass of Earth, so it's probably a rocky planet like ours. It's also close, just over four light years away, so it's a good target to study the chance of life beyond Earth. But Proxima b isn't exactly like Earth. One side always faces the star, and the other is always dark. This makes crazy temperature differences between the two sides. The line where day meets night, called the Terminator line, might be a place where life could survive. Proxima b's atmosphere is rough. Its star, Proxima Centauri, is known for solar flares, which send out X-rays and ultraviolet light. These flares could wipe away Proxima b's air over time, leaving the surface exposed to space. If Proxima b has air, it needs a strong magnetic field to protect it from radiation, because it would be hard for life. 
Despite the problems, scientists are hopeful about life on Proxima b. It's in the habitable zone, so liquid water could be there, on the surface or underground. Life might tough it out in the harsh conditions, like life on our planet survives in extreme places like deep sea vents or high radiation areas. These adaptations could include radiation resistance, underground living, or weird biochemical cycles. The search for life on Proxima b is asking, are we alone? Proxima b is a cool chance, a rocky, Earth-like world that could have what it takes for life. As our tech improves, we can learn about this planet and its secrets. Its atmosphere depends on its star, Proxima Centauri. Unlike our sun, Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf, smaller, cooler, and less bright. Because it's smaller and cooler, its habitable zone is closer, so Proxima b orbits just 0.05 astronomical units away, 20 times closer than Earth is to the sun. This makes things interesting for the planet and any life there. One issue is Proxima Centauri's activity, solar flares. Flares are strong bursts of energy that send out X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. They're more common in red dwarfs than in sun-like stars. Proxima B gets hit with high-energy particles non-stop, which can wipe away the planet's air over time. Without a field like Earth's magnetosphere, any air on Proxima B is going to get eroded, leaving its surface open to radiation. The radiation messes with the chance of life. High levels of ultraviolet radiation mess with chemical bonds, so you can't form complex molecules, making it real hard for life to show up. Earth organisms can fix DNA damage caused by radiation, showing that life on Proxima B might adjust. Proxima B's tidal locking could help. While one side faces radiation, the dark side could be safe. Underground habitats or deep caves could protect from the worst radiation. Subsurface oceans could be a radiation-free place for microbial life to grow, like life around hydrothermal vents on Earth. Still, scientists hope that Proxima B's environment gives us a chance to study how tough life can be. It gives us how new information about habitability. It's a place to search for how tough life can be across the cosmos. The possibility of life on Proxima B raises more questions than answers, but it broadens our search for life to cover extreme conditions. One of the key aspects of studying Proxima b is its potential to show about how life could conform to harsh conditions. Figuring out the definition of habitability. The exploration of Proxima b also fits into the search for exoplanets. Past years, the discovery of exoplanets has become more present. The study of planets in habitable zones has shifted finding life. Proxima b is not that different. Astronomers are still looking stars like Earth. Proxima Centauri also offers researchers an opportunity to understand between stars like our sun and red dwarfs. These help to see how life happened. For Proxima B remains a mystery because of the unknown planet, however we can find the answer in the future for the mysterious planet. Telescope and learn even more. Hubble has done great, like finding out the age of the universe and finding tons of galaxies. But it can only see visible and ultraviolet light. JWST is made to see the universe in infrared. This lets it see things hidden by cosmic dust. One of JWST's best things is its big mirror, which is 6.5 meters. This means JWST can get way more light and see things that are really far away and dim. The mirror has a bit of gold on it to help it see infrared, and it's created out of 18 pieces that form a great platform for seeing what's up there. Another great thing is JWST's sun shield, which keeps its tools at about minus 233 degrees Celsius. This very cold helps the telescope see small infrared signals without its heat messing things up. Unlike Hubble, which goes around Earth, JWST is way out there, about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. This spot lowers any issues from Earth's heat and light, keeping JWST seeing all the time. JWST can see anything from the first galaxies to the air around exoplanets, like Proxima b. Detecting infrared is great because it helps experts study redshifted items that move toward longer wavelengths as the universe gets wide. JWST can also help with questions such as where galaxies came from, how stars are made, and the conditions needed to create life on planets. 
Proxima B has made scientists and people wonder if it could be another Earth. It's in the right place to have liquid water, something important for life. It's about 1.17 times the mass of Earth, so it's likely a rocky planet. It's nearby, just over four light years away, making it ideal to study if life could be outside our solar system. Still far from a twin. It's tidally locked, meaning one side is always in the sunshine, and the other is just in complete darkness. This makes extreme temperatures between both halves. Where day meets night, called the Terminator Line, may have a limited habitable area that's good to create life. Proxima B's area has several issues. Its star, Proxima Centauri, is a red dwarf with intense solar flares. These flares can release X-rays and ultraviolet radiation, stripping away the planet's air and causing the surface to face the effects of space. If Proxima B has air, it should be helpful if there's a magnetic field to keep away from radiation. Without that, the surface would be a bad place for life. Even with these issues, experts are still hopeful that life could prevail on Proxima B. The planet is located in its habitable zone, letting liquid water be available on the surface or underground. Life could deal with the tough conditions like strong radiation by living in deep-sea hydrothermal vents or high radiation zones. Looking at Proxima B is more than a scientific thing. The process can allow people to learn about one of the age-long questions such as are we alone in the universe and can give us another chance to confirm planets with the same conditions in which life would need to develop.